drilled holes uh, straight through this and the tubes uh, after I marked them and then I used a bigger drill or a step drill to expand the holes in this plate. So this plate is 100% finished now except I need to sand it because there's a, small, a few small burrs here. So now these holes here are slightly oversized, I think they're 12 mm. The one is finished, so that's okay. That one, that one, and that one needs to be bigger. And I'm contemplating how I'm going to do this. Because obviously, I want uh, threaded holes that's going to be in there, there, there to fit the black plate, which we probably can't see. Now, but yeah, like that. So there is only half a millimeter clearance, or no? There's one millimeter clearance in <coughs> each hole. So we have slightly less than that tolerance in the hole or the thread positions. Now we're going to make the last of the inserts, M10 threaded inserts for the top lid. It's going to be 20.1 mm in diameter and 47.7 long. dry fit here now. There's a little bit of wiggle room. I'm going to go over the inserts. It's going to be welded in here. Like so, <coughs> this, one, this one is smaller than I would like, but it's right up against the edge there. Better. 
little chamfer there and, and then <coughs> so I guess I'll just uh, well I mean now I'll use this long bolt it gets easier to see here to hold them with while I weld so we get the alignment pretty straight because it's possible to get them not straight so I welded all the <coughs> rungs in I will see I just filed off the tops of the welds here I need to press them some more first we'll see how this came out always seem to have shrunk a little bit. This this one has a weld a bit of weld on it. Just a little file. I think that took it off. So one of the bungs that close up, you can see the outside just spots all around. So I ground down the welded in nuts. I'm going to put washers underneath the and then socket heads later, but this is just test fitting. So. We will change the socket of them for exit bolts. There's no need for high spring bolts there. And they're only threaded in the 2mm to take two anyways. Solid. Now we can put the motor back on just for one of the bolts. This is the pump and the bell housing, I guess, for the motor. I don't have the motor. Yet. Yeah, okay, that was out of frame. So, <coughs> motor will sit on top here. And there's a coupling in here. And the pump is underneath. So, we're satisfied with this uh, mounting plate and everything here for the time being. And uh, later I need to make the tubing, or rather pipe, maybe here pipe is the correct uh, term, uh, 
from the pump up to here and to the pressure relief valve and to, to, a, to a coupling goes to the machine. Um, down from the pressure relief down to one of these and the return from the coolant uh, and the sump pump in the machine which will be the original pump. But now we need to make the removable lid here first. So I made this little coupling here is supposed to go on the end uh, of the pressure regulator and then we have this uh, copper tube it fits in like so there's a step in the bore inside there so it will be pretty smooth but we'll see if we can brace this uh, or no not brace solder these two together if not uh, need to change the plan to something else First we need to clean the end of the tube properly. That should be good. And then I'll wipe it off. So here. Red spirit. Get rid of all the oxidation. And that's good. Then we clean the inside of our coupling on the same stuff. Shouldn't be oxidized because it's pretty new. And then I guess we'll just do it like this. Then we need to put on this uh, flux. Pinsel Echo Gel. Uh, let's see if this works. It will be interesting. Well, maybe we should put you more in the. Oops. Like so. Maybe that's better. Put some flux inside here too. Try not get it all to get it all over. And then I'll just like so. There. I think I got you in a good spot there. It's just a matter of heating all oops, all this up. This burner isn't really the best. Temperature we need here without setting the whole shop on fire. Definitely more than that. Yeah, that's nice. It's not sucking in, in like it's supposed to, I think. I don't know really. Maybe the steel just isn't hot enough. It's a pretty massive coupling, so maybe that's the problem. 
Hopefully it's definitely hot enough. Ah, now I think it's sucking in. I guess I hope so. No idea how much it takes to get this to flow all the way, but it uh, doesn't seem like there is anything on the inside yet. Okay, it just collects on the bottom now, so either it has flowed into the joint or it didn't work at all. I'll let it cool down and then we'll see. If this works, I'm going to make another coupling too. That will be a union coupling, so three pieces. That will be for the suction side of the pump. Because I really want to use uh, bigger tubing or piping uh, on the suction side. So I'll use the same copper tube as here, which is 28 on the outside and 26 on the inside. And the pressure tubing I'll be using is 20 on the inside. So if this doesn't work, then I need to get some other tubing with um, store bought couplings for the. Uh, both this here, the outlet of the pressure regulator, and for the uh, suction side of the pump. Cleaned up the coupling and looks okay. I think I'll test it and see how it goes. Uh, so, we got our adjustable feet here. Um, have a look at them. I assembled one already. I have this before on uh, my last, or the last uh, piston compressor I had. I had the same ones, just smaller kind. You can see, bought them from Granger and then they have their own, uh, I guess, uh, user manual kind of. Just um, very simple. This is kind of a bit too high up or too low down. And neoprene and steel, the upper part. Then you just thread it in like so. And then snug down that to lock it. I'll snug it down with a wrench afterwards. <coughs> there we have those two assembled. And then the um, theory is that you uh, clamp the uh, bottom of your machinery <coughs> between these two and adjust the height with this one and cinch it down with that one. <coughs> but uh, we had, I made these ones threaded because I didn't think it really true how this were. I knew how they were but I didn't remember didn't think about it. <clears throat> so, uh, if we have these threaded and welded in here, need to rotate the whole mount to adjust the height, and that's not uh, very convenient. So, we'll uh, drill out the threads here to that size, just 13 millimeters or something. We have a suitable sloppy fit. So we made our little program here to just uh, face it, OD, profile like that, and relief to get it all the way, get it all the way into the tube. And uh, drilling. Zero, zero, of course. And 
goes for film entertainment with film and just cut off with a chamfer on the end there so we got our little brushing machine <coughs> didn't get any video of it because the machine window was full of coolant so you couldn't see anything anyway little clearance groove there we can get it all the way up so it fits on that so there then, uh, see how it works or how it's going to work it's going to be like so that's on Yeah. There. See how. Okay, okay. <coughs> there will be a limited amount of adjustment here, obviously. But uh, I will just cut the length of the studs to. Uh, what I feel is a good length and we'll just leave it there because there's no no need for any adjustment. So and then we'll weld around there. Then we have about half an inch of adjustment or so that should be more than enough to get everything level. I welded this onto the shells. <coughs> and I have ground down the welds here, so it's relatively flat. And now it's just a matter of lining up things here, so... So it's flat. <coughs> and the feet doesn't get cockeyed or out of skew. I've got three of them done now, so now I'm going to show the fourth one. First, uh, I try to align it here, about well, four millimeters from each edge, so I can weld on top here. It's a little, it's a little bit easier than uh, having it like that. So, just align with my room. So my shim got really stuck underneath there. It's not the first time that happened has happened, but uh, well, I'll just grind it off and no bomb, nobody will know. I checked my alignment here or hmm, flatness. Rather, uh, it's very good. Just maybe there's ten to a millimeter too. <coughs> That way, the one was the worst. This one was pretty flat. And this way, one ten to a millimeter. It's very little, so check the back side here too. That's very good. Here I put it <coughs> all the way in. And I figured. I needed uh, or I need about 120 millimeters <coughs> max height here to get the jack underneath and stuff if I want to move it or to get my rollers underneath. I don't know if you can see that. Yes, you can. And the roller is about uh, 11 centimeters. So like four and. Uh, or something. 
anyway, now the height is, let's call it 143 millimeters. <coughs> And there will be some adjustments here too, so if I cut it down, uh, yeah, I need to cut off at least one inch or 25 millimeters. After a little figuring here, I decided there's no point in cutting more than 44 millimeters because then uh, this will bottom out against the adjustment nut here. So. And at 44, I will be at the height of uh, 100 uh, or 98 millimeters. So basically, an inch of uh, adjustment until I'm at the max height I'll ever need. So I'll cut off 44 of uh, all this. So this is how it looks when it's assembled. Uh, I won't put on the feet until I've turned it over.